Now the weekly injection of nostalgia. This time, a look back at a few Norwich City strikers, or centre fours as they used to be called, from the 60s and 70s. Traditionally, as the club has developed, goal scorers have come and gone fairly rapidly. But today, the Yorkshireman who came and stayed, and the Welshman and the Scot who passed through and yet made a big mark. And helping us along the road of yesteryear, a former Norwich player who went on to 10 successful years with Newcastle, Ollie Burton. Ollie Burton now runs a catering business with his wife Pauline in Dis, Norfolk. He played for Wales at every level and had come to Norwich from Newport as an 18-year-old tough tackling wing half. Up to Alcock and well made to an opening by Burton. And Burton, three Norwich players out on that right wing. It's Hill who's bringing it inside. To Alcock, Mannion free, Mannion in the clear, Mannion on side. And Mannion centres it. A long one and up goes Bryce but can't quite get to it. It's out to Punton. Punton across and Burton has scored a great goal. Ollie Burton found that playing with Terry Alcock was a lot easier than playing against him. He seemed to be stood around one minute and you think, oh, well, I've got him marked. And then you, you lose him. And before you know it, the ball's in the back of the net. He seemed to be able to judge these balls you know, from Crossan and um, Bill Punt, and he just, you know, split um, second timing. He was brilliant at it. Terry Orcock, or the Count as he was nicknamed, is the second highest goal scorer in Norwich City's history. Not bad for someone whose last five seasons were at halfback. Bryceland, look at number six, right on top of him again. Number three on top of Mannion. And this is a good ball from Gand Orcock, and it's a goal! That's the goal they wanted. All caught from Hill. Conway almost succeeding in getting through there, but a mistake again has let Mannion in. And he puts it across, and it's a goal to Alcock. That's Alcock's 100th goal, and that's four goals to nothing. Well, that's a great moment for Alcock to get his... There he is in the centre of your picture, 100 league goals, 24 of them this season. Ron Davis was a teammate of Terry Alcock's for three seasons. When he came to Norwich as a 21-year-old in 1962, he'd already proved at Chester and Luton that his game-to-goal ratio was incredibly high. At Norwich, he averaged a goal every other game. Lucas with a good shot, and again, he's hit the bar, and a header there. That's it by Davis. And more teasing, and Bunton is past it for again. He does it as he likes, and a great ball forward to Davis, as must be. Bryceland with a nice pick to Davis, Davis with a chance, and he's it. The ball played to Davis, the centre forward. Davis with it now, turning it infield to Bryceland. Bryceland jinking again. A lovely through ball to Davis, Davis with a chance, he begins the pass. Ron Davis was picked for Wales while he was with 2nd Division Norwich. That fired his ambitions even further. He was determined to move on, armed with his growing reputation, particularly in the air. For me, he was one of the most difficult uh, centre-forwards I've ever played against. He seemed to have this knack to be able to hang in the air, it seemed like for minutes. Sydenham. Good cross to Davis. 1-1. Three men in the penalty area for Southampton. And looking for Davis again, and he's got it again! And it's an own goal. I don't think it could have been stopped from going in, but it's been given. Now three men in the middle, if Sydenham can pinpoint his cross, this is where the danger came from in the first half. Over it comes. Davis there, number three! Davis trying to exploit this with Fulks out of position. And Davis has still got it. This could be his hat-trick. It is! Ted McDougall, a Liverpool reject, had scored at a phenomenal rate in the third and fourth divisions, but failed at Manchester United and West Ham. At Norwich, he proved he could score goals at the highest level with the right support and the right manager. John Bond signed him in 1973, in the dark days as Norwich struggled to avoid relegation. 
Even though they went down, he started to score goals immediately. Promotion and a Wembley appearance followed, and then a secure place in the first division for this complicated character. Reminded me a lot of a uh, player I played a lot with at Newcastle, M Malcolm McDonald. And he was one of these players that, if, like the manager, I believe John Bond was good at it, used to use a lot of psychology on him before the game and really G Ted up and get him to go out there believing in himself. And when he was out there, and Ted would score goals. Sissons now will have a chance. McDougall. Brilliant save. Machin, oh, he did well to get that one over. McDougall. My word, it's stepped into the rescue again. And it's McDougall again. And this time in the post towards him. Colin Suggett. To Grapes. Nice play. Up goes McDougall. Straight to Miller. Now McDougall's gone, herring down the middle. McDougall can get it. A chance for number three. Ted McDougall. I felt last year that I, I, I could have got over 30 goals in the second division if my mind had been right. And uh, I feel that I've done things in the summer to um, get that right. Um, I've read books on single-mindedness, uh, uh, getting all your mind and all your energies trained just to, for one particular goal. Back in the first division, McDougall was in devastating form. Mac the knife strikes again, the fellow's got a disease, a goal-scoring disease, and let's hope nobody can find a cure for it. We're into injury time now as McDougall goes forward. Wellington's coming out and McDougall's going to get another. It's a goal. That soft one against Leicester was his 13th in eight games for the newly promoted side. And this was his match winner against West Ham, the club who said he couldn't play. Now comes Day. Looking for McDougall, can he turn? What a goal! What a superb goal! But by September of 1976, he'd fallen out with John Bond, and the hero was gone. Today, after selling his sports shops in a pub on the south coast, Ted McDougall now lives in Canada. And Ron Davis, incidentally, is living in the United States. He married into New York high society. Good old Ron. Always the opportunist. But Terry Alcock still lives, works and plays golf in Norfolk. Well, next week, the last of our Anglia soccer specials, I'm afraid to say, we should be picking some memorable games and special moments from around the region, like this one from 1975 at Luton. Blocked by Weller. Adrian Alston with Buckley behind him. But he's passed him. They can get a cross in. And Blockley blocks it. Casual, 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 oh, what is it? They don't make them like that anymore. Anyhow, that's it for this afternoon. Back to the washing up. See you next week.